when I was getting more interested into cinema, I realized quite quickly that I wasn't interested in, let's say, uh, classical cinema where you work with actors in a script because I, I didn't feel like uh, creating dialogues or something artificial, let's say. And then I realized that the scenes which I like the most in films were actually the opening scenes or the end scenes in which you have long shots and maybe a voiceover or music, which are the function of the scenes is usually to uh, create a certain mood or an um, atmosphere actually. And then I started to think about um, these little bit more um, <coughs> abstract scenes and then I realized that uh, music works pretty much the same where the directness of music is, is actually, um, I mean, if you uh, think about it, a composer manages to uh, take his very personal state of mind or his or her feelings or whatever they're uh, busy with and they manage to um, abstract these things through the use of 12 notes into something very uh, universal actually and I think um, this is done by creating a certain mood or a certain atmosphere um, and the nice thing about this mood is that it's um, uh, that it manages to get uh, universal uh, qualities um, and I use the word uh, universal because an atmosphere is basically a simplification which many people can uh, relate to and it's what uh, you remember basically um, I received a grant from the Dutch Film Fund to uh, write a, a feature film script and in the beginning I was really uh, excited in writing it but pretty soon it became a more and more painful process in which I felt like I'm making scenes up and uh, complicating things just to get to the 90 minute length um, and I finished the script after a year I think but I was very unhappy with it and we never made the film and this kind of resulted in a strong um, anti-reaction uh, uh, in a way that um, I even more than before started to look for simplification rather than um, complication and, and I realized that um, most of my works which I liked were actually based on a very uh, simple idea and well like I said before in the search for um, directness the simplification process is very important i think the more um simple you can make your idea the more open your work gets and the more uh people can uh relate to it uh, i think that's the way music and poetry works and my idea of art is 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 the same um you start with a whole bunch of mess and uh, ideas and feelings, etc., and then you uh, manage to abstract it until, in the best case, only a perfect sentence doesn't necessarily have to be verbal is is left. Um, and this sentence manages manages to say everything in the shortest. Uh, possible way. I think a lot of art which I never liked so much and I still don't like so much works the other way around like people start with an idea and then they start to mystify it and complicate it until uh, you get something which is very close and something that not so many people can uh, relate to. Um, I always like to compare it to a figure skater for example or the other uh, athlete. I think the better the athlete uh, more simple it looks and I think this this is very true for uh, uh, art as well I realized that it would be uh, physically and uh, literally possible to not turn with the world for one day if you would 
uh, stand exactly on one of the axes of the of the Earth, which is either the North or the South Pole, and I, I choose the North Pole in this um, in this film. Um, if you would stand there and turn uh, clockwise one full circle in 24 hours while the Earth is turning counterclockwise uh, below uh, um, below you, you would. Uh, literally have not turned with the world for one day so I, I kind of like that this idea is actually uh possible so we went to the north pole and i and i stood there for 24 hours and it turned uh, opposite that direction as, as the earth did um the way we filmed it is we took an image every six uh seconds so the whole 24 hours is time lapse uh and the whole film is nine minutes um and it was actually quite easy to uh, define my speed because the sun's always up there. So I knew that if I would follow my own shadow, I wouldn't be turning with the world. Um, and after I finished the film, I had an idea of a soundtrack that I wanted to put under it. Um, but because this uh, film was basically only one shot, the soundtrack didn't work very well because it was a 19th century uh, composition and 19th century music is very narrative in its build up so it was very strange that the music was going somewhere and the image wasn't going anywhere and then I realized that I probably should try to compose uh, something myself which was something that I'd never done um, also because I grew up with uh, you know such beautiful music I never had the need to add anything to that um, but I took the decision to write something myself. I think it was about two weeks before the film was going to be premiered, um, which was kind of good because I didn't have uh, time to think about what I was doing. idea that it's possible to not to uh, literally not turn with the world for one day and um, I thought a day is, is a good time like you know it doesn't make sense to make a film that you don't turn with the world for one hour or something it's just not, not a powerful metaphor um, and in that movie you know I mean it was all about the idea if the you know the North Pole would be like in the Sahara I would have been standing there or if it would have been here I would have been standing here so one of the reasons that I also speeded that work up was because I really wanted to focus on the uh, uh, um, visibility of, of the idea rather than the whole endurance performance so in that sense uh, yeah the endurance performances are the are never so important for me I, I, I just most of the time I do it because of the the ideas or the visuals or and it's yeah it's much easier to put yourself in those situations than other people I think I wouldn't like to yeah, endanger other people or kill them or whatever a lot of my movies came about through very uh, practical reasons let's say um, my uh, girlfriend is Finnish actually so I spent a lot of time in Finland where we also shot this film and uh, once in the middle of the winter we decided to go to a little island just off the coast of uh, Helsinki and we went there on a small uh, ice uh, breaker and I was just hanging over the hull like looking how the ice was breaking and I, I found it very fascinating because as a doctor person I've never been on an ice breaker and then I uh, immediately had the idea that it would be a really powerful image if I would be able to walk in front of it. So then the next day I called uh, uh, a company who had biggest breakers and then I asked them if it would be possible to walk in front of it. And they said, yeah, sure, no problem. Like you can walk in front of it like 10 meters, it's still kind of okay. So then the film was made pretty fast actually. So I had to raise a lot of money to, to rent the icebreaker for a day. That was the biggest problem. <laughs>
When I started out, I was shown more in film festivals, let's say, but then in the last four or five years, I've shown more and more in galleries, and I kind of like it more that you're really able to create a space in itself. Um, also because when you show short film in cinema, they're always in a short film program, so you know the other works really start to work with, with your work. Um, but one of the biggest problems that we always come across when you have a work which is really, you know, like an A to Z work, uh, it's hard to show it in a gallery or a museum because of somebody walks in and then walks out again. So I'm actually still trying to uh, figure out what's the best way. Um,